Resnick interviews the Honky Tonk Man. So this is interesting because, and when Honky Tonk's appearance later in the state bit, we were all stunned that even though some of us knew it had happened, it was still stunning to see he debuted as a babyface. Yes. It cannot have lasted long. No, especially when you watch his fucking promo. Him and uh, Jake Roberts. That's later. but Oh, which one was this? This is Resnick. Oh, the Resnick one. Still okay. honky tonk. Yeah. He is up for 48 hours. He can't sleep at night. Can't wait to get his hands on somebody. And I kept waiting for him to name someone he couldn't get, wait to get his hands on. Like maybe there'll be a ABB face or a heel. We're going to sign here. No, no. All his fans can't wait to see him. Sometimes they don't like the way I wrestle, he notes. But I get the job done. And Resnick says, You're such a great musician. Do you have a favorite song? And Honky, Honky stops. He looks at Resnick. And then the Elvis impersonator sings Great Balls of Fire by Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> yes, he mm-hmm. did. This actually wasn't bad. This was much better than the segment that he did with Jake. Yeah. I was so excited for this next segment and so let down. The machines go shopping for a compact car. I th- I oh, pictured boy. you howling at this, Vinny. At the start, I was. The start, I was. Basically, honestly, my biggest problem is it was too short. But we're in a used car lot. Correct me, by the way, if I'm wrong, Vinny, on this segment. Right. Didn't we just do that thing with Granny about prices in the 1930s? <laughs> you did, yes. Okay. Yeah. Am I wrong, or did the car salesman, in trying to sell them this fucking piece of shit car in 1986, yes. claim that he wanted fifteen thousand dollars? You are wrong, Brian, because he said twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. Horrible car. I was like, what? So it's big machine and super machine. They are, of course, in their gear. Yes. In their masks and their one shoulder singlet mm-hmm. with one titty hanging out. And they're looking at this car. It is a piece of shit car. It's smaller than Big Machine. They're looking at the engine, and the dealer comes up to ask what's going up. And Big Machine does this one gimmick where he says Mitsubishi and Kawasaki and all this. He says the car is too small to sit in. The dealer says, no, no, you can fit in there. And so we see Big Machine trying to climb into this car for about two minutes. And he tries to go head first. And there's just a giant close-up of his ass is all we see. Tries to go ass first. That doesn't work. There's one leg at a time. They finally decide it's too small, no room o, and that's the end. No room o. That's what they said. Yes. Yes. I did right here. Awful but hysterical. <laughs> St- stupid. It's ridiculous. Pretty, pretty sure he was trying to shoehorn himself into Yugo. <laughs> that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Dark haired Dino Bravo. Hey, I do remember one of the first shows I ever went to when I was starting to figure out this thing was bullshit was a match where uh, the opening match was the Warlord versus Jimmy Snuka. And I went around back after the show, and and Warlord and Jimmy Snuka got in the same fucking car together. Oh, man. And it was approximately the size of this car, maybe <laughs> smaller. I don't know how they got in. It probably was very similar to this skit. They probably had someone jamming them in there. They had the smallest fucking rental car I ever saw. Mr. Snooker, would you like the $7 upgrade? No. No, no, no. Warlord was driving. He had to get behind the wheel. Dark haired D- D- Dino Bravo versus C.V. Offie. This is another one. I looked up this C.V. Offie. You know anything about this guy? Ah, I know he did jobs in WWF forever. Well, when he was first introduced, time. he was a um, he was like going to be, because Snooker was gone. So they introduced him as the like the brother of Jimmy Snooker. I see. He was a relative. Yeah. And so, I guess they wanted him to be the new Snooker. But you'll never guess what happened. People didn't give a shit about him. Mm. They, mm. they were not going to buy him as the new Jimmy Snooker. So, uh, you know, they turned on him and everything, and then they stopped, he stopped winning and became a jobber. And that was pretty much the end of that. Then he went elsewhere. But I was unaware of this. In October 1997, his real name was... Teo Gaga is the last name. Oh, ladies, brother. He was indicted by the Ohio Grand Jury for acting as the getaway driver for a robbery, burglary, and kidnapping carried out in January 1996, subsequently convicted of one count of aggravated burglary, two counts of aggravated robbery, seven counts of kidnapping, sentenced to 15 to 40 years incarceration, Following a series of appeals against his original sentence, he was released from the North Central Correctional Institution in 2007. He served 11 years 
and was deported back to Samoa. Oh, wow. Wow, he was really trying to do this snooka gimmick, huh? That was his story. And apparently he published an autobiography, Dance with Fire, 2008. So, yeah. Well, as noted, he was around wrestling for a long time. Was, it's funny because he's in here. He's clearly older than Dino Bravo and very clearly more experienced. Oh, yeah. Dino Bravo was horrific. And, well, yeah, but he he got better was still horrific. This is the even more horrific version of Dino Bravo. Well, I was going to say, like, I remember Dino Bravo just a few years later when he had the blonde hair. Yes. He was horrible then. Exactly. And I think he was more mobile here. Uh, so arguably, he was better yeah. here than he was a couple of years later. Oh, yeah. He put on a bunch of muscle. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Gorilla Monsoon insists that C.V. Afi is the youngster, and Dino Bravo is uh, uh, getting the edge and experience and taking advantage of this young man. Even though Johnny V and Dino Bravo did an inset about how he was a, this is his debut, and he was going straight to the top and all that. So Dino here was horrible. It was a parody of a pro wrestler. If I'm going to miss this clothesline, well, I'm going to rear all the way back like a baseball player throwing 100 miles an hour, and I'll swing it eight feet over your head, and you duck it. It's just a huge cartoon. Eventually, he suplexes the CV onto his head and pins him. Well, Vinny, believe it or not, uh, Dino Bravo was one year older than C.V. Afi. Really? Yep. I stand corrected. Dino Bravo was born in 1948, August of 48, and C.V. Afi was born in April of 49. Well, goddamn. Brian mentioned at the beginning of the show that he learned something watching this show. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of this match, uh, Bobby Heenan says uh, to about Dino Bravo, he's not too bright. And Monsoon says, what does that mean? And Brain pauses for a moment. He says, it means he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I learned something, too. Yeah, Dino did this back suplex and in, like, first day wrestling school. You want to drop the guy flat, and Dino just dumped him on his head. He dropped, he dropped him flat on his brain. Yeah. His brain is flat now. Brian, do you want to talk about the snake pit? I mean, the point of these snake pits is like, Jake is a heel, and he brings a baby face on, and he buries the baby face, but then they let the baby face like fire back yeah. and try to humiliate Jake. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hunky had nothing. Nothing. The best he could come up with was, you need to be like me. Because Jake had some line about how, have you ever been this close to a real man? Yeah. And Honky laughs. He goes, you're a real man? What you should do is you should be driving a 58 Cadillac down the road. And he's like, I'm like, what the fuck? That's your comeback? And it just, I mean, I watched this and I was like, this babyface thing is death. It's death. Like, you got to turn ASAP. And, you know, I presume, you know, the, the end of it was like, you know, Honky saying, uh, you know, I'll kick your ass anytime or whatever, not using those words. Jake says, I'm not a hard man to find. So I presume they were like doing matches on the road. Babyface Honky Tonk Man against Jake the Snake Roberts. I've got to see one of those. I got to. Hmm. So Jake points out that Elvis Presley has been dead for 10 years. That was bizarre. <laughs> like, that's bizarre. Like, Elvis has been dead since, like, two years after I was born. It was 1977, I think he died. Right. So, it's 1986. He'd only been dead nine years. It's not even ten years, yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's a long fucking time We're ago. very old, yes. 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 But, uh, Honky then asks, what does that have to do with me? Apparently oblivious to the fact that he strongly resembles Elvis Presley. <laughs> yes. Jake refers to himself, I am an innovator, not an imitator. Yes. And then he asks about, you ever close to a real man? Honky's comeback is, anyone who plays with snakes is not a man. They are a sick human being. So, to recap, Honky does not think he resembles Elvis at all. Earlier in the show, couldn't even do an Elvis song. And So he's right. And anyone who plays with snakes is not a man. I thought he was talking about like playing with your dick. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.